Sign up today for a seven day free trial at alerts.chartguys.com. Everyone checking in on the cryptocurrency space. They're chopping up trees outside. We're not gonna let that stop us. We're looking at Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin, XRP, Binance, ADA. And again, as we've been saying, I'm impressed. I am impressed by the bulls resiliency in the face of this bearish news. We have a complete recovery at this point in the sense that the news has been digested. We're getting back to where we were before that news came out and the bulls are continuing to hold their key levels. We are not seeing weekly support as I keep pointing out every video. We are still in the same weekly bull move. We have not lost momentum enough to form a weekly higher low. Every single candlestick is a higher low on the weekly time frame at this point. So looking at the daily chart, really actually the four hour time frame is the most clear. And if you've been watching my channel, you know, I use the 12 and 26 period moving average because they are great guides in my opinion. If you watch my other videos, you know, I'm not really using other moving averages. I use the four and the eight exponential moving average for day trading stocks. But other than that, I'm not one of those people. And trust me, I watch videos and roll my eyes as well for the people that have 10 moving averages that they're looking at. And yes, some of them are gonna act as support and some of them are gonna act as resistance. But I cannot stress enough how I have loved this exponential 12 and 26 period combo in the cryptocurrency space ever since I started trading it for its visual guide. When we saw the four hour bounce, we knew as long as we can't get over this resistance, the bulls aren't going anywhere. Look at the complete change in momentum. This period compared to this period is about the same length of time. And one thing that stood out was the bear breaks with no follow through. But once we got over that level and turned it into support, that completely changed everything. It completely shifted the momentum. Then breaking the high of the initial bounce of 52.95 further gave the bulls confidence. And now we're just watching the four hour uptrend. RSI levels are being respected a little bit. I looked this morning and thought, oh man, I felt a little FOMO. I thought I wanna grab a Bitcoin position. I looked at the four hour and the hourly RSI and I said, consolidation is probably coming in the near term. I can be patient if looking for an entry. And looking at the four hour uptrend, 52.76 is a support level. And we have another one at 5306 and anything above those levels will keep the four hour uptrend in control. So if we lose the four hour uptrend and here's our level from before the bad news, 5512, we got up to $90 away from that level. But if we lose the four hour uptrend, we zoom out to the daily chart and we say, all right, we now have a very clear tightening range. We have our high of the move, high of 2019 and our low of the bearish reaction. And that would be a lower high. And we'd look for a bit of an equilibrium within that range. And if we condense it down to the two day time frame, it would be an equilibrium setup if we reject from 5650, lose the four hour uptrend and then start having to pull back again. So I am keeping an eye on that four hour uptrend because if the four hour uptrend remains intact, pretty much we can say if we hold that four hour uptrend into the weekend, we're gonna be right at the door or through this resistance level. If we lose the four hour uptrend, tightening daily pattern is anticipated with the two-day time frame showing some nice condensed clarity. So with that, we've got Ethereum and Litecoin doing a little bit of their own thing. So we have a little higher low pattern on Ethereum with a higher low and higher high. The lack of follow through right now has me zoom out to the weekly time frame. And at this point, we're still waiting for confidence that our weekly higher low has been established. A weekly inside bar would not be surprised if that's what forms this week. If that weekly inside bar next week were to break bearish, we would say no, our four hour, or I should say our weekly higher low has not been established yet. If it breaks bullish, then we say, yes, it has. That's looking a little bit far ahead. Let's wait till the weekly candlestick closes before we get there. But as far as the daily chart goes, the bulls just want to maintain higher lows and higher highs. And the strength that we've seen in Bitcoin today is not being mimicked here on Ethereum. We actually lost the four hour uptrend on Ethereum. So we've had these periods over the last few days where Bitcoin was clearly a lead bull and Ethereum and Litecoin were weaker on the pullback. Then on the bounce, Ethereum and Litecoin were stronger and now they're weaker again. Just looking, it depends on where you're looking and what size of scope you're looking at. Because if you're zoomed in, it's going to be weakness for ETH and LTC. But if you were looking zoomed in just yesterday, it would have seemed like a lot of strength. So as always, check those charts, ETH, BTC. Check the trends of those charts. Are we in an uptrend or a downtrend? We are very clearly in a downtrend. ETH BTC is a very bearish chart and we just dropped down to a lower low, confirming that little daily bear flag. And we're now at the lowest price we've seen in 2019. So ETH continues to look bearish compared to Bitcoin. And if we get a more convincing break under 292, we're looking down at the next support level, really all the way down at 2674. 
So looking at it on the weekly time frame, it was an equilibrium that broke bearish, and now we're getting that follow through the bear break. I am not going to be playing Ethereum bullish anytime soon. Perhaps if this weekly and daily RSI, if they both line up oversold, then I'll start to get interested in Ethereum, but not right now. Litecoin had that big bull move on the daily, and now we're fading down to change the daily trend. We have to hold the low of 64.86 and then change and follow through by breaking the high of 74.90. So watching for the potential of a daily trend change, the four hour uptrend has not been lost yet. It's more of an equilibrium, high, low, and I would call that our lower high. That you could call that as well. That would just be nitpicking, but 71 is the most important support. If we lose it, we lose the four hour uptrend, which means zoom out to the daily because the daily chart has to form that high or low. So looking at the LTC BTC chart, because I always want to know which coin should I be focused on. So LTC BTC is also showing weakness. Look at this resistance at 14, essentially. We've rejected now. I'll call that a, a multiple top rejection. The weekly time frame here is coming off of the uptrend being lost. So now that we've lost the uptrend on the weekly chart, we know that Litecoin has been stronger than Bitcoin all year on this bounce. But if we see a weekly lower high and lower low, that confirms we're now in a weekly downtrend. If not, we're in a bit of limbo. We're not in an uptrend because we lost the higher low pattern, but we're also not in a downtrend unless we confirm that lower high and lower low. So I will be interested in Litecoin comparative to Bitcoin if we can see a clear break of 14 and turn that level into support on the daily time frame. And right now the bulls are hoping for an inverse head and shoulders pattern with that resistance level. The neckline, we'll call it 14 there. This would be the left shoulder. This would be the head. This would be the right shoulder forming. And a bull break of 14 convincingly would be that shift that the bulls need for Litecoin to gain the spotlight again. So that's something I'm keeping an eye on, but I have to see that break of resistance before I'm going to be interested in Litecoin again. And otherwise, we're just watching that Bitcoin four-hour uptrend. Now we'll look at some of these other individual names. We still have an uptrend on XRP. It's similar to Ethereum, but a bit stronger just as far as the last six or seven trading days go. So we have a higher low, anything above 298, maintains that daily little uptrend. And if we lose that daily little uptrend, we're going to be looking at pretty much the same thing as Ethereum. So if this inside bar forms on the weekly heading into next week, if it breaks bullish, our support is found on the weekly. And if it breaks bearish, then we have not found a support yet. So those little higher lows for Ethereum and XRP are very important for the bulls to maintain in the short term to try and give some confidence of a momentum shift. Because if they do not, we're looking back down at the recent lows. Binance had a bull reaction to news inside bar, inside bar, bull break. And this was a nice, let's look at this one on a more condensed time frame. And you can tell what I do when I'm looking for clarity is I'm just looking at all different time frames. Look at the two day chart and the 12 period exponential moving average, seeing it respected four separate occasions tells me that that's an important moving average to be keeping an eye on, on that time frame. And we look at the daily and we can see it's not respecting it as clearly. The 12 period here, we close below it, back above it, close below it, back above it, close below it, back above it. I have to see consistency. I'm not going to care about the daily 12 period exponential moving average if it keeps flip-flopping like that. But if I look to a different time frame and we don't close below it, we've closed above it every time it's been tested, that tells me it is an important support level. We don't have that wishy-washy action. It's respected it every single time. So the news that came out, essentially, let me break it down. What happened, as my understanding is, that we had a Reddit post saying, essentially, someone did some digging and said, hey, this looks like Binance is about to have margin trading. And then the CEO of Binance a while later came on and made a Twitter post that essentially I interpreted to say, you know, wow, human crowdsourcing of information is really something. And a lot of people took the fact that he did not deny it as a bit of a soft confirmation. So the price reacted to that. We have a little daily higher low and higher high now. So we shifted that momentum back. Actually, we never really lost the uptrend. We never saw a daily lower high and lower low. So this is just continuing that uptrend. The weekly time frame inside bars are worth watching. And the bulls just want to maintain the four hour uptrend at this point. Anything above 21.28 is a daily higher low. And the four hour higher low, we have not set it yet. This is still the same move from the initial bullish reaction. And we got a bull cross of the exponential moving averages. And we'll just look for a four hour higher low and higher high, which would have us looking back at the all time high of 25.50 for Binance. And the good news keeps coming for Binance. Binance is the coin of 2019 right now. And we'll see if anyone can dethrone them. But right now they are on a nice track 
for keeping really strong and doing a really good job of managing how market the market reacts to their news and, and to their coin. It's 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 fun to watch from a technical analysis perspective to see a company doing it right fundamentally. And to compare it, we have the MJ sector that I trade often, and we have some companies that know how to speak to the market and some that don't. A company puts out big news. It puts out multiple big news press releases on the same day, and that day they go on CNBC and they tell the world about it, as opposed to a company that just drags along, puts out a, a news release every now and again, doesn't make public appearances. It's a very big difference in how the market reacts and how the market perceives the value of the company or the crypto or whatever it is. And Binance is doing everything right, in my opinion, and the price is reflecting that. So we'll see how long that keeps up. And that's where we stand. Cardano. So ADA. We're looking for a weekly higher low to form. It's just been a slow fade. There's no major red flags. It is still clearly a weekly uptrend with bull volume exceeding the bear volume. And on the daily time frame, we need a clear trend change. What stands out to me right now, we're still in a lower high, lower low pattern. The resistance here was 744, and we did break that 748, though not convincingly. But what stands out to me when I look at this is we probably have an inverse head and shoulders on a shorter term time frame. So let's check it out on the four hour. And I haven't even looked at the four hour at this point. And I'm going to say, let's condense it a little bit. Let's try what the six and 12 hour looks like. I'm looking at this being a left shoulder, this lower low being a head, and this now trying to be a right shoulder. And if we can break 748 and clear 767 shortly after it, that will be a very notable change in trend. Look at the exponential moving averages on the six hour here, the 12 and the 26 period. We had the bull cross and we wrote a very big bull move. We had a bear cross and we've been consolidating since then. And we're on the verge of a bull cross. If we break 748, we'll get that bull cross of that moving average. And that could be the first indication that our weekly higher low has been established. So a trade for that scenario, if you're looking for a swing trade, would be to enter a bull break there and stick a stop below the low at that point of 656. That's a lot of space before getting stopped out in terms of a percentage move. It would be down about 10 or 11%. So you'd want to keep the position sizing reflective of how much risk that would be on that swing trade. But the reward would be that you are correct. The weekly higher low has formed and we would look for a bounce to form a weekly lower high but perhaps a 20, 30% bounce, if indeed that does play out. So that's just a, an example. I'm not taking that trade. It's just an example of establishing a trade game plan based on multiple time frames and shifts in momentum on shorter term time frames, frames reflecting what you're going to anticipate on the longer term time frames, which would be that weekly higher low. We know we're very likely to form a weekly higher low, and we just need the shorter term details to show us that that is indeed happening. So that's where we stand in the cryptocurrency space overall. Again, I am impressed by the Bitcoin bulls. Break 4,900 and then we'll start weekly consolidation. Hold 4,900 and the bulls are just fine and looking pretty good overall. So again, my I, the question that I pose, if we're not going to see a bearish reaction to news of that magnitude that's going to derail the bulls, I don't see a fade of 40% happening in the Bitcoin space here in 2019 after the year of consolidation we just saw. I don't foresee that happening to drop to a lower low on Bitcoin. It was essentially for me, I had to see a bearish reaction in the news to believe that we could drop to lower lows from where we stand. And the fact that we haven't is notable. And if we get up towards 6,000, I know that turning 6,000 into support would convince some other people as well. Keeping in mind that poll we did of about 2,500 to 3,000 people, pretty good sample size for the cryptocurrency space, did it on Twitter. So obviously it's not a, a scientific study by any means, but it was two to one that thought the bottom was in 33% think that we're heading to lower lows. So that means that there's 33% of people that still probably want a piece of cryptocurrency and they're being patient and waiting. And there's nothing wrong with that. They have their game plans. Maybe they'll be right. Maybe we will drop to lower lows. But if we do not, those people are going to have to establish positions. Otherwise, watch longingly as the price continues to rise. So maybe they'll establish their position Next time we do consolidate to look for that weekly higher low. But if we see a weekly higher low and higher high, I think that is the most significant summer event for the cryptocurrency as far as technical analysis is concerned. A bull cross of these exponential moving averages, which have been bearish for a long time. If we get a bull cross and a weekly higher low and higher high, I think that will do a lot more convincing of the people that are currently not believers. So I appreciate you watching. Do good things out there. We'll continue to check back in as 
action dictates. Check out the alert system for a free week trial, alerts.chartguys.com, and we'll see you next time. All right, so here's the game plan of the yard. We've got a bunch of pots going. I've never really grown in pots, but space is limited. So we got some potatoes going in the pots. Got some peppers. I'm gonna do some winter squash. That's some butternut squash in a pot. And I'm trying to have this whole deck trellised with a bunch of green stuff soon. We're gonna put basil and other herbs in those two little boxes. And I've got a bunch of snap peas that are starting to grow up. So I'm gonna trellis these bad boys up here and then run them up the deck. Bunch of tomatoes as the deck gets the best sunlight and cucumbers that I'm gonna have climb up the side of the house as well. Got more peas. So these are all peas in there and peas in here and you can literally watch them grow over a couple hours. Got some winter peas growing up the side of this house and got some nasturtium that's going to climb and we'll see it's an experiment but hopefully over the next couple of weeks this will all be covered in green here's a pretty flower and put a whole bunch of there's a garlic but a whole bunch of these are all wildflowers so this is just the compost pile and figured I'd throw a bunch of wildflower seeds on them. You just gotta water them once every morning. So we're gonna have a bunch of seeds. And these are some wild potatoes from the compost that just grew on their own. Extra eggplant I threw in there. So that's the layout. And now we'll check the progress once a week.